Hey, it's Ranger Russ back at the Meg's Point Nature Center. I want to welcome everybody to the Nature Center. The sound's going to be a little bit off today. I forgot my microphone. So uh, we're just going to go with what we've got. So first off, let's talk about our reminders and introductions, things like that. This is a Connecticut DEEP facility, the Department of Energy and an Environmental Protection. And unfortunately, all of our public buildings are closed right now, so you can't visit the Megs Point Nature Center. As soon as that changes, we'll let you know and we'll welcome you in because the things that we talk about in these Facebook Live presentations are a small sample of what we offer here at the Nature Center. But we want to give a big shout out to the Megs Point Nature Center uh, and the DEEP because they're the reason that we're here right now today. We have to remind everyone, wash your hands. So 20 seconds washing your hands, cough into your elbow, completely cover your mouth when you cough into your elbow, keep your social distance, three possums away from each other, or if you'd like better, uh, one eagle's width away from each other. So the width of an eagle's wingspan away from each other. All these things are really important. The more that we can maintain our social distance, and keep these things up the sooner that we can get through this. Social distance is important at state parks as well. Even though you're outside, you still need to maintain social distance unless it's with someone within your household. So if it's someone you live with, you don't have to worry about that six feet unless you want to keep away from them. But most of the time, it's just other households. All right, so we've got a really fantastic animal. This is probably going to be one of the most amazing things that I tell you about. This animal is absolutely incredible. One of the things that it can do, it's just, it boggles the mind. And I'm not gonna be able to explain it completely because it's so strange what this animal does. All right, so first of all, you say it's gonna be a really spe spectacular animal. It's a slipper snail, okay? We have thousands of these shells out on our beach. If you visit our rocky shore, thousands and thousands of them out on the rocky shore. They're washing up there. It's not because there's a massive die-off. They build up each winter. We get more and more of them. They sift out from the rest of the debris. They're lighter and bigger, and they end up up high on the beach where the sand is down underneath of them. So these are out there, thousands of them again. This is a snail. Unlike most snails, this snail can't move. Okay, it attaches to a rock or some substrate, something permanent that, so even occasionally, they will attach to a horseshoe crab shell uh, or other shells, but they attach there and that's where they spend their entire lives. Now they start out as plankton. We've talked a lot about plankton because many of the sea creatures that we have at Hammonasset start out as plankton, little tiny animals swimming through the water. So that's how they start out, and they will look for a place to land and begin to grow. You know, So they're going to start a rock or, or that hard substrate. They're going to start to grow. Now when they're floating around, they're not boys or girls. They're somewhere in between. When they first attach, they're going to turn into boys pretty quickly. Now it takes like six days, but they're going to turn into a boy. This is how we start. They're all boys when they start out. So, they're growing on a rock. Now, they are colonial. They grow in a colony. There's a colony. So, the one on the bottom is obviously dead. There's nothing in it. But the rest of these are still alive. And they'll wash up on the beach just like this. Sometimes you'll find them all like this. But, they start out growing. And... Another one will come along and land on the back of that first one. Remember, the first one's a boy, okay? And then another one, and they'll start to grow on top of one another. So that one that landed first, it's going to turn from a boy to a girl, all right? Absolutely incredible, but that's what happens. So it starts out, it's, a, it's nothing when it starts out, not a boy or a girl. Then it turns into a boy. Then it turns into a girl okay as more and more stack on top the others that landed remember they're starting out as boys they're gonna turn into girls as well so as the stock stack gets higher and higher 
they are going to turn into from boys into girls all right and the ones on top are always going to be boys so these up here these are boys these down here these have turned into girls and some of them in the middle may be changing because again it takes uh, up to six days sometimes longer for them to turn from boys to girls so is that the craziest thing you've heard of I think it's probably one of the craziest things that I know of in the natural world that these animals can turn from a boy into a girl now they are planktonic when they're babies when they're adults they eat plankton and the word that we've used a couple of times detritus anything all the organic matter that's floating around in the water either pit, bits of algae or even other animals waste they'll eat all of that they filter it out and they eat it they're filter feeders some people actually eat slipper snails so these are edible and I was looking it up to see if there's any recipes out there I didn't find any good recipes but people say they make a good uh, appetizer before a meal and they put them in sauces and things like that so they are eaten now they are found from Nova Scotia all the way to the Gulf of Mexico so this is their natural range is along the east coast of the United States in Europe which they are in Europe they were brought over with oysters when we were bringing the eastern oyster over to try and introduce it into Europe some of these were attached to the oyster shells and now this is an invasive species most of the countries in Europe list this as an invasive species and my understanding it's found all over Europe from from the northern parts of Europe Denmark area all the way around France Spain up into uh, Italy I didn't see where it reached all the way to Greece but it's at least on the coast of Italy so all over and in England as well these are found all over Europe now remember an invasive species means that it's not from the area so most of the time we're talking about invasive species that are found in Connecticut this is one that we introduced over to Europe so the other direction uh, and the other thing is that it's harmful to the environment and in, unfortunately for Europeans there are not a lot of natural predators for these in Europe so over there their numbers are a lot greater than they are here and they are listed as an invasive species so I want to give a shout out to everybody that's that's uh, sending messages in right now I would like if you put your questions please put down where you're from where you're writing us from so that we know how far this is going and if you're watching this video later continue to post questions we look at those past videos and try and answer your questions now many of you saw yesterday I wasn't able to get out to the Osprey platform to retrieve the mesh netting I want to give a shout out to Terry he got out there uh, after the tide went down a little bit he was able to get there and get that mesh out of there so we had two days in a row with mesh that ended up in the Osprey platform the Osprey collect it it's it's a decoration for them so the bright yellow and the bright orange two days in a row it's not there any longer that's not to say that they won't bring it back because they might find another piece of mesh or something that they would collect and bring back to the nest so thank you to, to Terry for getting that uh, mesh out of the the Osprey nest now we also yesterday had a really special opportunity uh, I went to Chaffield Hollow and was able to re-nest a baby great horned owl just a little tiny one only like 14 days old so a couple of weeks old so if you want to see those videos those are all posted up right now on our website so megspointnaturecenter.org all right are we seeing any questions about these now I've mentioned that um, they do change from boys to girls and they are planktonic so they will be plankton for about 60 days before they finally land I'm not sure how old they live seven years was was one number that I saw um, but it didn't say whether that was a max or an average uh, what feeds on them very good question there are many things that like to eat them crabs love to eat them 
Now these are found in a range of depth of water. So as you get deeper, obviously the predators are going to change. So they can be from right on the shore, about a meter, all the way down to 70 meters, which is like 230 feet they can be. So imagine a little animal like this. They're floating around. They're plankton. They're floating around. Everything wants to eat them when they're little plankton, even other filter feeders. So they may be eaten by adult slipper snails. When, when uh, filter feeders are eating, they don't choose what they're filtering out. If they're grabbing little plankton, then they could be eating the, their own young. Um, but they, as they get bigger, they start to land, and that's when bottom feeders are going to like to eat them. The bigger crabs, lobsters will like to eat them, things like that. Why do they clump up like this? They are colonial, so this is their reproductive strategy. So they stay together in a group. So you've got the girls down here and the boys up here. And this way, when they lay their eggs, the males are right there. So again, all those little eggs are going to be floating around in the water. So they stay together. It's easier for them to find one another since they don't move around. Do we have another question? Yeah. How do they, these are snails, so snails have gills, and uh, they're absorbing oxygen out of the water. They can survive out of the water for, for a time, uh, but not very long. Very often when you find these washed up on shore, it's because the one on the bottom died, and the rest of them are still alive. These are all still stuck to each other. So unfortunately, once they wash up on the beach, chances are the rest of them are going to die shortly after. We've got them in our touch tank, and we do put... Uh, brine shrimp and um, uh, tubeflex worms in there. So hopefully they're able to filter it out. Unfortunately, we have filters that also filter out the same thing, so it's hard for them to survive in a touch tank. Impossible for them to survive out on the beach because they're, they're getting moved around and washed up. How are their prey? Get them out of the shell. Very good question. So a lobster or a crab is going to be able to grab them and pull them off a big lobster could break the shells but yeah they can they're strong enough to to separate them if i really tried i could probably separate these i don't really want to do that we're going to see how long we can keep them in our touch tank all right and speaking of that i think it's time to put them back in the water so we're just going to let them sink to the bottom and again in there they will be able to filter uh, the little bits of things that we put in the tank. All right, let's talk about some other things. Many of you are following us or liking us on Facebook. We want to keep that up. The more you like us or follow us, the more of your friends will be able to follow us as well. I want to remind everyone that yesterday we were able to do that renesting. All of those videos the first day and the second day. So finding the baby and then getting it back up have been combined on our website. So you can go there. You can go to visit a place called Hope's website. They've got lots more information about not only the owl we did yesterday at Chatfield Hollow, but some of the other birds that they are trying to rehabilitate and get out into the wild. So it's a really good idea if you want to learn about birds of prey and I'll probably be going up there to film some some more episodes uh, there's a lot to talk about at a place called hope so we'll get up there and talk about some other ones how long do oysters live good question and it depends on the species of oyster I think that the oldest oysters in the world I think it's the Icelandic oyster and you guys are gonna have to look this up they say can get up to 200 years old. So you're going to want to check that one. That may be the Icelandic clam. I always get those mixed up. But check that out and see how long they live. But they live a very long time. How do they move? Good question. And they don't move. They are per Once they are not planktonic anymore, so as plankton, they can swim. And remember, zooplankton are animals and phytoplankton are plants. So these would be zooplankton swimming through the water. Once they attach, that's it. They might be moved around if they attach to another animal's shell, like a horseshoe crab, but they don't really move around on their own. 
do the snails change from boy to girl during a specific time of the year or can it happen at any time excellent question it happens at any time and the reason that it happens when the male or when the new one arrives and starts to grow on top it turns into a boy and it sends off a chemical that tells the ones on the bottom it's time for them to change from boys to girls so they release a pheromone that signals the change and that can happen at any time of the year all right do we have any other we're covering most of the questions all right um, I want to also remind everybody um, that playing is important, okay? I saw this quote from Mr. Rogers the other day, and I thought it was really important to remind everybody. For kids, playing is like your job, and you need to enjoy your time, take some time, play, draw a picture. Uh, people have been posting lots of cool pictures on our website in our virtual learning center, so... Just take advantage of some of your free time and make sure you still have time to play. I know you're doing schoolwork at home and sometimes it takes longer than it would if you were in school, but keep up the, the playing. I also want to say this coming Sunday we're going to do a virtual Easter egg hunt. Since you're not able to get out and get together as a group and do an Easter egg hunt, we're going to have a 360 picture somewhere in the woods I'll hide a bunch of eggs around in a circle and you can move the camera around it'll be virtual and count how many eggs there are and then the next day we'll post how many eggs there were and you'll see if you found all the eggs in our virtual Easter egg hunt I will probably do a couple of them I want to do one that's really challenging the eggs aren't going to be very visible and then we'll do an easier one that that you'll be able to see most of the eggs but that's what we have in store for you on Easter. We're also going to be asking you if you can identify any of the plants or animals that are in the picture with the eggs. So that'll make it a little bit more challenging. Um, and then tomorrow, so it's a state holiday tomorrow, so I'm not going to be working per se. I'll be working, but uh, I'm going to be doing these programs from somewhere else. I'm just going to get in my car. I'm going to go, maybe I'll go to another state park or a forest and find a place to just, we'll do like a nature walk. We'll do them again at 11 and at 2. So we'll do a walk and see what we can find. You never know what we find when we go on a walk, so it'll be really interesting. It'll be almost like an Easter egg hunt because we'll be looking for something cool to talk about. And we'll be doing that tomorrow as well. So is there anything I'm missing? Just a reminder, the Nature Center is closed. Parks are open. Maintain your social distance and the parks will be able to stay open. If people st keep crumpling together, they're going to have to change the rules and try and keep people apart. But keep your social distance. Wash your hands. Cough into your elbow. Cover your face. I don't have mine on right now, but I have a little mask that I wear all the time. So uh, any other questions before we sign off? Looks like we covered everything. Why do, they change? Why do they change from boys to girls? That's just their reproductive strategy. So a reproductive strategy is the best way that they can reproduce is by keeping most of the colony will be girls and a few on top are boys. That way they get the most eggs released into the wild. And that change happens so that they have plenty of girls and they're still going to be boys because you need both boys and girls to reproduce so that's what they're up to and I want to thank you all for tuning in looks like we had a good good group of people watching live and if you're watching this uh, that's already been recorded I don't know if you guys can hear it but it's pouring here right now can you hear that noise that's rain so I think all of you are going to be getting some rain um, in a little bit too so Somebody says they met me at a seedling teacher workshop. I, I think I, if that was the Marsh one, that was a really fun program. I had a good time doing that one. All right, we're going to sign off for now. The rain is getting louder. I'm not sure if you guys can even hear me, but I hope you're all staying safe and staying separate.